Okay guys, so now that your workbook is created and it has elements of your brand in there, for example, my brand, um, this is how I use my fonts, this is how I incorporate my devices or icons and my patterns are somewhere in there as well. Um, it's a bit busy, but it is definitely up to your taste. So what you would do is make sure that your workbook is really simple. Make sure it's as simple as possible. Remember your workbook size is always that letter, US letter size, and I'm going to show it to you right now. 8.5 by 11 inches now be sure to drop that information inside of just that workbook section so what you want to do is make sure that your workbook is pretty simple because people print workbooks sometimes so you know sometimes I don't have so much too much fun with the cover but then again you know it's just branding right also make sure that these things are transparent well you bump the transparency, see if it was like this, then that would take a lot of colored ink. And you can even make this even more transparent than this yellow that I do have here. Um, my workbooks are usually fillable. Make sure that you stay cohesive by checking the transparency of something else. So this is 23. I'm going to go back up here and change. Uh, just one shouldn't make a difference, but you know, you want to keep it consistent. Also make sure that you're using your brand fonts so that everything is on brand. Like if you go over to something else, you can see that, you know, I'm using that Nexa Bold font that is one of my signature fonts, right? So be sure to stay consistent. And the thing about it is sometimes we create stuff and it looks crazy all over the board and it doesn't stay consistent with what we're doing. And so it throws, th it throws things off for people, sorry, right? And I also just included one of my elements in there and um, one of my icons, I should say, in there and, you know, made sure that I was okay with it. There's a signature font in there and so it looks like something else that I've created previously. If you look at, you know, some another workbook of mine, it is cohesive, okay? So what we're going to do is, this is actually our workbook for today, and I'm just going to hit download. I'm going to make sure and hit PDF print recommended, and I want all of the pages, so I'm going to leave it as all pages, and I'm going to download that. And so what we're going to do right now is make this fillable. So this is pretty cool because everyone thinks that they have to either pay someone a lot of money or use Adobe, and you don't. So I'm going to show you guys how I do this. So I do this in this pretty cool thing called PDF Escape. So in PDF Escape, what I'm going to do is I can drop this PDF. So that's the one I just downloaded. I can upload it here and it's going to actually open up this cool editor. So I'm going to give you some tips that I definitely struggled with when I first started using PDF Escape. So I'm going to click. So this page doesn't have any anything fillable. This is our first page. So I'm going to go on to our second page. And what I am going to do is I'm going to hit form field, right? So when you hit form field, you're going to t uh, select text paragraph. You, if you were doing something else, fine. But this is what I use PDF Escape for to make it fillable, right? And when I say fillable, it means that your audience can type directly into. So I'll show you that in a little bit. So I'm going to choose text paragraph because I want you guys to write a bit in this, these workbooks. So I'm going to hit select. Then I'm going to select the actual space that I'm going to make fillable, right? And I'm going to change the size of so I like 15 because it's kind of big. You can either bold it or itilize it. You can also change whatever to whatever font you really want it to be. So I am going to, don't click just yet. You want to right click. And when you get that drop down, you want to go to object properties. You don't have to change this. Make sure it's checked multi-line. Make sure there's no maximum length. And you want to leave it as uh, left. Or if it's if it calls for center, definitely change it, and then you hit OK, and that ha that makes it perfect, just the way you want it. And so you go through doing the same thing, right? So select, and so you don't have to change the fonts again because that font is locked in, is locked in. Sorry, and then all you gotta do is you go again, and you just click OK. You go again, you select right click choose object properties okay 
right and don't be afraid you can always change the size of like let's say you didn't get it out enough and you already released you can move it around still right but just make sure you do that right click object properties okay so I'm just gonna do this for the entire book but I'm not gonna let you go through this with me so I am actually going to move on to the next section and just in case you're wondering what fillable means, I can show you what that means. So fillable means that you can use this in Adobe Acrobat Reader, which is free to download. I will put a tutorial on how to use Adobe. Um, and so I have created so many things that are fillable and it's, it also bumps up the value of your workbook or whatever it is that you're making, right? So this is my video pro planner and one of the things i love about this is it's fillable so i can click in here and type or i can print it out if i felt like right so um my pro planner goes for 47 dollars because you can also print you can work in it in here you can do so many different things and so i like making all of my workbooks fillable that way you can save it and use it like you can really interact with the content and it's also usable on mobile right so let me know what you guys think about pdf escape